Howdy. Let's take a look at one more slightly compl more complicated problem that deals with the use of energy and momentum within the same situation, or at least the same question. So, taking a look at the second one, it says that a small block of mass m is released from rest on a frictionless track. At the bottom of the track, it goes into a box of mass capital M. The box with the block moves along a frictionless surface a distance s. Starting at the point mark zero, there is friction between the box and the surface with the coefficient of friction mu. If the box is to stop right at the point a distance l from the point zero, what must be the height h? Okay, so we need to break this up into three different parts because in this first part what I'm going to use is since this block is simply just sliding down a ramp, I'm going to be using conservation of energy. And what I need to do is I got to find the velocity right at the bottom of that ramp. Now once that occurs, it collides into this box and because it collides into that box, we need to use momentum. Okay, remember we use momentum every time there's a collision every time there is an explosion. And what I'm going to do with momentum is find the velocity immediately after the collision. And I'm going to call that velocity V2. Finally, once we have that V2, I'm going to use conservation of energy once again to calculate all the work loss or the energy loss due to friction, where now this V2, the final velocity of momentum, becomes the initial velocity of energy. And so first, we know that our initial energy is equal to our final energy. But we know initially kinetic was zero, at the end potential was zero, and so we would just set the mgh equal to the one-half mv1 squared, and what I get is that v1 is equal to the square root of 2gh. Okay. Now that I know the velocity right before it strikes the block, now we need to use conservation of momentum. Using conservation of momentum, I need the p naught in the x direction to equal pf in the x direction. And the reason I really care about the x direction is because that's the direction that the box is going to move at the end. And so initially, in the x direction, that m has a velocity v1 cosine theta, okay? That would be the x component of that final velocity v1 right before I strike the box. And then together, you take the combined masses of your little m plus capital M v2. And v2 represents the velocity immediately after the collision. And so v2 is equal to that little m, v1 cosine theta, divided by little m plus capital M, which we know what v1 is. v1 is the square root of 2gh. So I take a little m, square root, 2gh, cosine theta, over the combined masses of little m plus capital M. And this will be my v2. And finally, once you have that, we use energy once again. And in this case, I'm losing energy due to friction. So we know that our network is the integral from R1 to R2 of F dotted with dr, which is equal to mv squared over 2 at R2 minus mv squared over 2 at R1, and we know that our final kinetic energy, if it comes right to a stop at L, we know that this is equal to zero, and your initial kinetic energy has a velocity V2. And so your net work, which is equal to a negative, now this mass is the combined masses, because the combined masses are moving together, so it'll be a negative M plus capital M v2 squared over 2, where v2 was the final velocity of momentum, is equal to the integral, and I'm going to go from 0 to L, 0 to L, and my friction 
is pointed in the negative direction of my axis. So it'll be a negative mu. And obviously with this, your n is just your, cap your combined masses times g. So it'll be little m plus capital M times g. And integrating this with respect to x, we would have a negative little m plus capital M v2 squared over 2 equals, and in this situation, all of this is a constant, so integrating that times x from 0 to L will just be a negative mu m plus capital M g L. Now, remember, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to solve for h. So first thing that I'm going to do, I know that these negatives can cancel to make those both positive. And as for v2, I know what v2 is. v2 is all of this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is little m plus capital M over 2 times v2 squared. Squaring all of this, this will be little m squared times 2gh times cosine squared theta over little m plus capital M squared is equal to mu little m plus capital M g l and now we just got to do algebra to solve for that h let's see i know this will end up canceling here this g will cancel with that g this two will cancel with that two i think that's all that can cancel and now just do that algebra to solve for h you should get that h is equal to let's see in my numerator i'll have a mu times l i'll also have a little m plus capital M squared, and then my denominator will have a little m, and we'll have a cosine squared theta.